when are we going to see the action? When are we going to see the representation in all areas? If it's in the school board, if it's in the hospital board, if it's over, like you said, the practice owners, the leads that are over the practice or deans at the schools or even just the professors, that was something. We need that. And so, like you said, the very thing you said, many of us have to make that choice based upon our not just doing what we want to do, but also our values, our responsibilities, and just knowing what it'll take as well, the sacrifices as well. And so we always have to be mindful as well. Will it cost being away from my spouse? Will it cost being away from my kids? Will it cost me not writing that book? Will it cost me not going after that other degree or doing my volunteer work? Like We always have to think about that because we can't just say no. (laughs) If we say no, it's a problem. Like, well, why are you... Hey there, my friend. Welcome to the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. I am a cardiothoracic surgery PA with a background in public health and neuroscience. I'm also your peak performance coach. I had to say no to working extreme long hours where I was always on call and feeling exhausted, underappreciated, and undervalued, and said, heck yes, to a life and career that elevates my energy and passion without compromising my health and sanity. Now, I'm on the mission to support ambitious healthcare professional like you with a demanding career to become a confident leader who are living purposefully and fulfilled to truly be both a powerhouse in your career and a passionate person in life. Let's start our journey today. Hi, everyone. This is your host, Sabrina, for another episode of the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. And today we are having another exciting episode and with Tanya Miller. And she is the founder of the Tanya Miller LLC and the author speaker, coach, strategist with a passion for helping people and organizations to figure out how to do life and leadership unapologetically on purpose. And we are so excited for having her here with us. Thank you for joining in. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was excited just all around with how you came up with this podcast and I know you felt that there was a need for it and then the niche as you talk about that you bring to it. So I'm excited to be able to talk with you on this session and whatever you got going for me. I hope I can answer. Thank you for just being here. A lot of our listeners are pretty much all in the healthcare industry. Some are still in the clinical round. Some are in the industry versus there are a small population of them are doing academia. Now, we all have a different type of challenges, no matter what role we're in. And for us to be able to live and be a leader unapologetically, that's something I think most of us are driving toward. So what does that mean to be a leader and to be just a person living unapologetically for you? You know, the reason why I even say life and leadership, Sabrina, is because I want to remind everybody that everyone's a leader. You're a leader of something. It doesn't have to take a title to say that you're a leader. It doesn't have to take a position or money to say that you're a leader. You're a leader because there's somebody somewhere that's looking up to you, period. And I know there is. So that's the one thing I say. But to be able to do it unapologetically on purpose, it kind of ties into, okay, if my mission and my reason for being is to be in the healthcare industry, but what about it? What about being in the healthcare industry drives me? Like you said, what makes me choose the path of being a nurse or being in academia, being a doctor, I still are trying to figure out which path to go while I'm doing my clinicals or while I'm doing my residency. And so that's when you have to kind of, as my mom would say, know that you know, know that you know who you are, because when you're able to do that, you're able to really see that path 
it's like when you're trying to figure it out, it just becomes like a beaming light. Okay, this is my next step because this is a part of who I am and this syncs to where I should be going. Perfect. So how about you share a little bit with our audience, your own story, your own journey? How did you get to where you are right now? Yeah. So growing up and I was looking at our my assessment that you showed me a little bit, it kind of made me laugh because growing up, I was very much into math and stuff. And so I decided early on that I was going to school so I can help my dad because he owned his own business and or help other people like him. And so I thought I needed or I was going for the finance side of it. That's why I was laughing because that's what I went to school for was the finance side of it. But once I got going in the particular school that I went to, I realized that I really was more on the entrepreneurial side of things and the systems and processing and organizing, organizational development and just seeing how systems should be put in place, that side of things, right? And so I still embrace the finance, but I also embrace that other side of what was available in my degree and did that as well. And so I've been in the finance industry for my nine to five since, gosh, I'm trying to think, since 03. I'm old. (laughs) Since 03. But in that, I started looking back also about those things that I like to do growing up. I like to write. I wanted to write a book. My friend and I wanted to write a book growing up. We were trying to. I thought about how I was always able to speak. I might have been assumingly seemed like the most quiet person in the room, but I could synthesize what everybody said, put it together and bring clarity to it, but also bring analysis as well, just like that. And they will be like, I thought you weren't even listening. I'm like, I never said I wasn't listening. I was just chilling. you know. And so that side of things, it just, like I said, it made clear some of the next things that I would do. And so that's how I began when I launched my business back in 20, I think it was 15 or 16. These years are catching up on me. But with writing my first book, getting speaking engagements, life coaching, helping organizations with that. So with that, it was easy. And so that is, like you said, I know my life mission. That is what my life mission is. And that's where I'm trying to go full time. (laughs) So that's awesome. So I asked our speakers to do a holistic life assessment to find out what is their number one killer in creating that harmony in their own life and work, because all of us are expert in our own field. But despite how much of expert we are in our own fields, it's really hard to be expert in everything in life. The more that we can think about the other areas, then we won't unexpectedly hit a roadblock and have no idea why it's happening to us. So it's funny that sometimes we're looking at these assessments and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Oh yeah, it did. It made exactly sense for sure. Yeah, and Tanya, one of the things she indicates she really want to focus on is life mission. At the same time, she scored the highest on life mission. And that sometimes for many people, it's the same way. The things that we focus on the most is something actually we're really good at. And that's great. We are so aligned with our knowledge base and what we're passionate about. We're keep driven for that goal. However, if we don't really take a step back and think about something else in our life, that's also a key player. Then we start feeling wobbling. And I'm glad that that assessment was helpful in a a way. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because one of the things that I wasn't achieved, well, two of them, they made sense because I'm literally at a roadblock in my life right now in career achievement. I'm trying to see, is it worth the battle? Just being honest, as a minority woman, to keep trying to fight, to get to the next level, to get to SVP, to get to a director, to get to managing director, to become that role and position in my career? Or does it make sense to just stay where I'm at and get fulfilled in other places and not be tied as much? So that made sense because I'm at that roadblock right now. So I was like, yeah, that's true. I'm not sure. So I'm literally at a crossroad and kind of the same thing with the health and fitness. I know y'all care people like Tanya. Did you just say your health and fitness is not good? 
it's not that it's not good. I'm actually just in the middle of a health crisis, actually a newly diagnosed chronic illness and it's being difficult to treat. So that's why that one was so low because because of it kind of made me disabled, if you will. So I can't work out and do things like I like to do. And so it reflects my assessment. I can't put a lot of focus in necessarily, but I am putting focus in trying to get in remission to get cured. Yeah, I thank you so much to even share that with us. Now, all of us think we are young, we're driven, we just keep going. But sometimes we're forced to really think about our own body and these diseases or conditions come unexpectedly for a lot of people. Then it really makes us think, what is really important to us? My health, of course. How can I also maintain where I'm at, improve it, and also want to be at a position where I'm aligned with who I am as a person and serving that society, whether it's through my career or through a different venture that we're doing. For your point of being a minority, even myself, I am joining with 18 other Asian women to write a book, Asian Women Who Power Up. There's also not enough women, as you're saying, representing in society. More than 50% of women have college degree, but when we're looking at people in the higher level executive, just like you're saying, it's the worst to fight for that. We don't have enough of us in those higher levels in every single field. They're not there. Right. We're not there. So are we fighting for that? And at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it? What does that mean for you? What is your value system. Do you want it to be a dean of the school? Do you want it to be a leadership position for your hospital or for your clinic? Do you want to own a private practice and run it exactly the way that you want to serve your patients? And that's the decision we have to think about. Is it worth to you? No one else could make that decision for you. And even you don't want to do it, no one's going to look down upon that because you know your value system was actually going to move the needle in who you are as a person. Yeah, absolutely. And I applaud you guys for writing that book because that's so true. Like many people are talking about diversity and talking about inclusion, but for many of us as minorities, we feel like y'all been talking about it for a long time. When are we going to see the action? When are we going to see the representation in all areas? If it's in the school board, if it's in the hospital board, if it's over, like you said, the practice owners, the leads that are over the practice or deans at the schools or even just the professors, that was something. We need that. And so, like you said, the very thing you said Many of us have to make that choice based upon our not just doing what we want to do, but also our values, our responsibilities, and just knowing what it'll take as well, the sacrifices as well. And so we always have to be mindful as well. Will it cost being away from my spouse? Will it cost being away from my kids? Will it cost me not writing that book? Will it cost me not going after that other degree? Are doing my volunteer work. We always have to think about that because we can't just say no. <laughs> if we say no, it's a problem. Like, well, why are you saying no? This is your opportunity to step up. We're like, but I had plans. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's a great assessment for sure. There's a good thing about saying yes. And there's a good thing about saying no. I always promote people to say no to almost everything then you can say heck yes to the only things that truly matter to you. Listen, I love that. I love it because you said the exact, exact opposite of what most people would say. I love that. <laughs> I mean, for the reality is we cannot be managing everybody else's life. We have our own life to manage. Even your significant other, your kids, your family, your best friend, everyone got to manage their own life. You have to be taking full responsibility and ownership for that life. And when you do that, then you can so clearly say no when things are not going to be matching your value system. And before you even say no, you have to know what your value systems are. Once that's aligned, no is a perfect sentence. 
You don't even have to explain. Oh, my gosh. Sabrina, you're my sister from another mother. I always say no is a complete sentence. That's what I tell people when I'm mentoring them or coaching them. And they're like, what do you No is a complete sentence. Exactly. Because for every (laughs) yes you're saying, you're saying no to so many things that could actually matter to you. Instead of you saying yes to the things that really matters to someone else, but it's just something good to do for you, but not a necessity or not something that truly connect with you. Now, if you think about Michael Hyatt's Read and Compass before we wrap up, he talks about We needed to focus 80% of our energy on things that we're passionate about and are very skilled at. If it's a no on either one, there are distractions. And if a no for both, you definitely should not be doing that. It's a waste of our time. So I know we can talk about this for so long, but for anybody who wanted to reach out to you, where do they find you? You can find me on social media under talking with Tanya. So that's T-A-N-Y-A, talking with Tanya, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. That is where you'll see me. I'll be smiling and saying some hopefully information, inspiration and encouragement for you to figure it all out, get the puzzle pieces together. So Perfect. Thank you so much, Tanya, for joining us. And for anybody who is loving this episode, we want to hear from you. So do give us a review on Apple Podcast and let me hear about what's the major takeaway that you got from this episode. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. And we so appreciate your listening in. Hope you all have a great day. All right, my friend. How did you love this episode? Make sure to subscribe to our show so you can continue to build your positive intelligence for that beautiful mind of yours to live powerfully and passionate. I know this just the tip of the iceberg. You probably have a lot more questions on actually how do I implement those things into my own life? Well, this is the solution. Joining us inside the private Facebook group Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash powerful passionate where I go live weekly to answer any questions that you have and continue to put more resources for you to help you to get to that point. You can be both powerful and passionate where you no longer working on any mundane work and truly focusing on the things that matter. You can be both powerful and passionate where you can overcome any mental roadblocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate where you feel energized from the moment you woke up to the time you go to bed. Join me and together we can create a life where you can be both powerful and passionate.